Good day everyone and welcome to the TCNM Essential Module 2. This Module 2 elaborates the automation for the fabric and network deployment, including the service node insertion. We will start with um, the deployment of a greenfield uh, fabric, then we will cover the um, multi-site domain deployment. We will see how we can uh, visualize and integrate the classic LAN into a multi-site environment. We will cover features uh, that allows you to group interfaces and switches to accelerate the deployment of networks and VRF. And then uh, we will uh, see the networks and VRF deployments uh, using the DCNM graphical user interface, right? And finally, we will uh, cover the service node insertions um, uh, to conclude this uh, module number two. Let's start by looking at the Greenfield Fabric deployment. The term of Greenfield is used when you plan to build your VXLAN EVPN fabric from ground up. The first action is to create a new fabric by selecting the corresponding fabric template and edit the fabric settings if needed. The templates will be discussed in a next chapter, but in brief it means that the fabric settings come pre-configured with almost all parameters required to build a full fabric. Then DCNM discovers all the devices of interest to be imported into the new fabric. When all devices have been imported, you save the configuration. This action generates the required CLI configuration for each node based on Cisco best practices. If you are familiar with the NXOS configuration, or you may want to learn how to configure a fabric, you can preview the configurations for each node. If you don't care about any NXOS configuration, you can just keep these preview options and leave the DCNM to push this configuration as is. And the last uh, action is to push the configuration automatically created by DCNM toward each devices. When the configuration is deployed and the fabric is up and running, some actions may be required based on the user intent or based on the status of the switch. For example, you may want to configure a VPC pairing, shut down an interface, or you want to add a virtual port channel, and so on. There are several options that you can apply on a per device basis. For that purpose, you can select the device of interest and call the device options. You can initiate a VPC pairing, you can manage the interface associated to the device, you can view, edit, or add a policy associated to the switch, you can get the historical view of the configurations pushed to that device, what has been deployed to the switch, with the result, successful or failed, and uh, in case the switch is out of sync, meaning certainly that someone has changed the configuration directly on the device, you can preview the differences uh, against the expected configuration from uh, DCNM. Then you can tell DCNM to deploy the original configuration to be in sync with the initial intent for a particular device. You can change the role of a node. The role is used by DCNM to automate the configuration to be deployed to the device. DCNM recognizes a role between a spine or a leaf node, but you may want to change the role, for example, uh, set the role to a border gateway for a multi-site deployment or use the border leaf role for an external network connectivity and so on. You can also suspend the switch using uh, the graceful insertion and removal feature either because you want to upgrade uh, its uh, software image or swap the switch for a RMA process. For that action you can change its mode to maintenance or operational using uh, this knob. Finally, here you also get the options to remove, rediscover, reload the switch uh, if needed. This slide details the different steps to build the fabric. The following blocks are all options you can choose in the process of uh, creating a fabric. The blue squares represent the action flow being demoed 
just uh, afterwards for um, uh, VXN fabric deployment. But the first step is to add a new fabric, right? So there are several options, several choice are proposed. And this is where you specify if you want to create a classic LAN or an external LAN. And in this example, you may want to deploy a VXN VPN fabric. So you need to select the easy fabric template, the option in blue. The other options will be uh, detailed across uh, different sections. Then you can change the fabric settings according to your intent. There is uh, only one imperative field where the IS number must be specified by the end user. All other parameters given by default are aligned with Tisco best practices. Then you add a switch and uh, either you discover the concerned switches with the respective management IP addresses, or you can use POAP power on auto provisioning for zero touch deployment. For the demo, we will discover the manageable switches. By manageable, it means that the switch has been pre-configured after its uh, first power on with uh, its uh, reachability information, the host name and the admin credential, that's it. Select uh, green field to configure the switches from ground up, or you can here select the brown field options to import seamlessly uh, an existing fabric already deployed and uh, running in prod. You can verify or update the switch role, as we said, by default DCNM assigned the role based on the hardware identifications. And uh, optionally, you can create a VPC pairing uh, here if you wish. Um, or this can be done afterwards, it's up to you. You do a save and uh, you can now preview the configuration if you feel comfortable with uh, an XOS uh, CLI. Keep in mind that at this stage, the config preview is quite long as uh, it gives you the full config uh, from ground up for all the devices. This being said, you deploy and you wait uh, a couple of minutes. And now we can see a demo that shows how to deploy a VXN VPN fabric from ground up. So before we go into the uh, DCNM interface, um, as you can see here, all the devices, all the switches have been uh, rate erased. So um, we just have the, uh, the host name, the uh, out of band management parameters, and as well as the uh, credentials for admin. When, so when ready, you go into the um, uh, DCNM uh, GUI and you log into the um, uh, admin user. From there, you can call the Fabric Builder applications and uh, you can now create your first uh, fabric. You select uh, the uh, template of choice that will help you to deploy uh, either VXLAN VPN fabric or an external network or you can uh, configure your uh, classic LAN, or you can use a template to deploy your multi-site uh, domain. What we are looking for here is the uh, easy fabric for, uh, to deploy a VXN VPN uh, fabric. We just give a name, and uh, then what is really um, required is the IS number, right? That's it. For the rest, could be uh, for the replications, for the VPC, for the protocols, or for any advanced features. Um, you can keep everything by default. The only thing we're going to change here, which is uh, an option, is to set a bit uh, just in the uh, IP range, just to differentiate with uh, the next uh, fabric uh, number two, right? And there are other parameters, including for the uh, backup. When you're happy, you just save uh, the settings and the fabric is ready to import uh, your fabric. So when you add the fabric, you still have the two options. Either you use the uh, pour on auto provisionings. So you just uh, need to set up uh, the different parameters for that. Or you uh, use a seed unit, uh, like in the demo here, where the devices are manageable and you just give uh, the credentials, the number of hops to discover the devices. Above all, you, you don't want to preserve the configuration for the green field builder. So uh, when ready, 
uh, you will see after a couple of seconds so all the devices available. You select uh, the one that you want to manage to input in your fabric. You'll just be uh, notified that uh, be careful because uh, everything will be uh, rate erased and you import the switches into your fabric. Now, we still have uh, to configure or to push the configuration, right? We just imported the fabric uh, into the inventory. So we can move the devices as we want. We can change the uh, uh, the role of the devices. By default, the recognize, the CNM recognizes a spine from, from the leaf. And we can uh, display uh, the layout uh, automatically. As you can see, uh, the system informs you that uh, all the switches uh, are re reloading, which which is expected. So um, you will wait uh, a couple of minutes before they come back uh, green. So they are ready. So you can set up, uh, you can initiate your, your VPC uh, pairing. So you select uh, the device of choice and um, that's it. Right, so now we can save and deploy the configurations. So uh, now the uh, with the save, the um, uh, the application is uh, computing the configurations, and um, uh, if you want, you can uh, preview the configuration as we said. Right, so as you can see, there are uh, a lot of um, CLIs. Right, if you feel uh, confident, you can read um, the CLI for each device. And you can see the differences, right? But because we start from ground up, uh, it's not very um, useful here, right? So, and we deploy, right? It will take a uh, few seconds. So um, DCNM is pushing the configuration to all devices. And now you can see it is completed and everything is green. So the, the fabric is now ready, right? If we go back to the switches, so as you can see, we have the VPC domain configured. So everything is now uh, ready on, on the devices. We just need uh, now to deploy the network and VRF, which is uh, the next uh, sections. Before we deploy the networks and VRF, quite often it is required to dual attach a host to a multi-home pair of devices built uh, using Cisco VPC, for example. You configure the traditional LACP from uh, the host and uh, from the VPC pair, you need to configure the virtual uh, channel across uh, the two VPC pair device. So let's have a look uh, through the next demo and see uh, these configurations. So from uh, the fabric uh, number one, you select the VPC domain of interest it's called the uh, manage interface. And from there, you just add a new interface, a virtual port channel actually. So you select the devices where you want to deploy the VPC and uh, you can change the VPC identifier and uh, you specify the physical interfaces you want to use to build the VPC and um, you save, right? You can preview the configurations right and uh, we could deploy now but we will deploy later before we deploy just create uh, the second uh, virtual port channel for the host number two so select the same vpc uh, peers devices select the interface uh, 1 slash 19 you could use the uh, config mirroring if you want to simplify uh, the configuration in case uh, this, this is the same physical interface on both sides now you can see uh, blue means that um, there is a pending configuration. You can save and deploy, and uh, you can see for the two devices, uh, you can preview the configuration. So you can see that interface port channel 18, 19, uh, they're going to, to be pushed. So um, you can uh, check the differences between the running configuration and uh, the expected uh, configuration, so you can retrieve here very easily what's going to change. And uh, when you are happy, you just uh, deploy uh, the configuration, and um, it takes uh, just a few seconds to deploy the configuration, and you are ready.
and uh, you will see the uh, uh, the uh, interface uh, going um, green so the VPC is green the port channels are green as well so now everything should be green that's it thank you okay so you can uh, go to the next uh, section that covers the multi-site uh, fabric thank you